Hello everyone, today we're going to be continuing what we covered yesterday uh, with the gem tutorial. Uh, in the gem tutorial, we created a small little gem, uh, hosted it on GitHub, and then used it in our application. You can think of this like maybe you have a piece of reusable uh, functionality in your application where you'd like to use it across multiple apps. You break it out into a gem, you host it on your own GitHub page because you consider it like proprietary, so you don't necessarily want to push it up to Ruby gems. Uh, and then you just use it with your own applications. Uh, now in this one, we're going to do something similar. Again, we'll be pushing it up to a public GitHub repo so you can at least see it. Uh, there are resources you could look into and I'll do a follow-up tutorial for uh, using a private repo. Uh, but for this one, we're going to be pushing it up to a public repo and we're going to be using a engine instead of uh, a gem. Now the key difference, sort of the way that I think about it, is a gem is something like the followability gem or the axes upvote or axes votable gem. Uh, and, and stuff like that, where it gives you a little bit of, of behavior you can add to a model or something or some cool piece of functionality, uh, but it doesn't come with its own views. As soon as there's something that involves its own views, that's sort of where I start to think of an engine uh, because an engine to me is just like another Rails application. So you might think of like we covered the threaded gem, which was the uh, it's the form, the complete form solution. Uh, that's a mountable engine. You have like Spree for commerce. Uh, you have uh, Devise. There's a, a couple different uh, you know examples here. I think even the actual edge guide. I oh, had it open. I wanted to show it. Uh, let me see. I'm pretty sure they mentioned Devise, threaded, Spree. Uh, refinery CMS, you get the idea. So there it's it's sort of like because device has like the login page or threaded has like the forum pages it generates and it's all under a neat little route. That's where I start to think of it like an engine as opposed to a gem. Although it's really confusing because they're both plugins uh, and they're both gems. Like we call it the device gem, even though it's an engine, but also it's a plugin. Uh, so it, it gets a little bit weird, um, but it's just like a little bit of schematics at the end of the day. Uh, we could take a look at how to actually use an engine. For this one, we're just going to be using a little blog engine. So we have like a localhost port 3000 application running here. And then we can visit slash blog engine slash posts to use the blog that's supplied by the blog engine as opposed to creating it in our own application. Not really something you should probably do, but it's a good way for you to at least get familiar with these. So let's go ahead and let's just create this real quick. As usual, we only do contrived examples on this channel. Uh, we're going to start by doing a make dir. We're going to call this the video directory. We'll cd into video. And then in here, we're going to have to do two different things. One's going to be our engine. So we're going to start by saying rails plugin new. We'll call it blog engine space dash dash mountable. Now there's two different options here. One is mountable and one is full. Now counterintuitively, the full option gives you the, uh, I guess like mostly full uh, set of features. Uh, and then the mountable option gives you all the features of full and then some, which does raise the question of why <laughs> this one's called full uh, if this one has more features. But whatever, maybe this is the over full option. We're going to be going with this so that we can actually mount it. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and we'll run this. This runs very quickly. It's going to create a couple different files here for you. Uh, and it's going to look very similar to the gem we created the other day. So now let's go ahead and let's also do a Rails new. We'll call this the blog itself, I guess. I don't know. I'm not feeling really imaginative today. So we'll create that Rails app as well so that we have that to work with. While that's running, let's go ahead and let's create a new GitHub repo. We can do this by coming over to github.new. That'll take us straight to the new repository page. We can then call this the Rails underscore engine. Let me make sure I'm zoomed in enough so you can read this. Uh, Rails underscore engine underscore video, I guess. Or we could just leave it as Rails engine, sure. Uh, and then we'll come down here and we'll click create repository. Once we have that, we want to add the uh, blog engine. So we'll CD into the blog engine. Uh, blog engine. We want to add this as the uh, repository here. So we'll do a git add dot git commit dash m init commit. And then we can copy this second line right here. We can come down here, right click, hit enter, type yes, and then hit control L to clear our console. So now if we refresh, we'll see that this is up here. So it, this comes with a couple of instructions for how you can add this to your gem file in your actual Rails application. 
But first, what we want to do is we want to actually uh, modify this a bit so that we have something to work with. Now, what we're going to do here is just create a quick little scaffold in our blog engine. So let's do that. We'll do a CD into the blog engine. We'll do a Rails G scaffold, I mean F11, uh, scaffold for a post with a title and a body of type text, just like that. Uh, we're running into an issue here. Uh, the gem spec is not valid. So the first step is we have to come into our gem spec. We have to modify this. So it's asking for the home page and all that stuff. Let's just come up here, copy our GitHub URL for the home page. We'll paste it into here. Uh, we want to change the allowed push host. We'll just change that one. The source code URI will change that one and the change log as well. Uh, the summary, we'll just get rid of the to do. We'll get rid of this to do. At this point, I think this should be good. Let's go ahead and let's run that scaffold command again. And hopefully now it won't be upset with us. So there we go. We have that. Now let's go ahead and let's run a rails db colon migrate command, just like that. And now we're going to run into an issue if we try and use this, but I want to run into this issue so you can actually see how to resolve it. So we have this, let's go ahead and let's do a get add dot, get commit dash M create posts, and then we'll do a git push, something like that, type yes, and now we're good to go. Come over to our GitHub repo, refresh, and we should hopefully see that we just pushed that create post commit, cool. Now let's come over to our actual Rails app and let's come into our gem file. In our gem file, we're gonna want to add this gem, so we'll say this is the, uh, we call this the blog engine, I think, right? Uh, and then we'll do a git, and this is going to go to our code here. We'll click on code, SSH, copy this, and we'll paste this in. We can go ahead and save that. Uh, optionally, you can specify a branch here, uh, but in my case, it's not necessary. Uh, but of course, as you uh, you know work with your tool, you'll probably want to do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll do this. And now let me come over to this other tab here. And let me just CD out of here and into the blog, oops, into the blog itself, which is in video slash blog, right? Yeah. So inside of our actual application, let's go ahead and let's run a bundle command, type yes. And then as soon as this runs, we should hopefully see that we are using blog engine 0.1.0 from Dean, blah, 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 nobody cares. Let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S and come over to localhost port 3000. Oops, we'll see that this is working. Let's come into our routes. We can come over here to blog, config, and our routes.rb. Now, what we have to do here is gonna look a little similar. Let me just make sure I open the right page. Uh, it's gonna be a little similar to what you've done in the past, which is you come into your routes, you have an engine, which means you have to mount it. So we'll come in here and we'll say mount the blog engine, colon, colon, engine. And then we'll say mount it at uh, slash blog underscore engine, something like that. Now let's come over here. Let's go to slash blog underscore engine and do this. And we'll see no route matches. Why is that? Well, if we come down here, we can see we have the blog engine path. But of course, what we created here was a scaffold. So if we come into our app, our config and our routes.rb for our blog engine, we have the resources posts, which means this is going to be at uh, localhost port 3000 slash posts. But uh, because this is a uh, engine and it is named blog engine, this becomes, uh, it's, it's gonna become slash blog underscore engine slash posts uh, where this is gonna be. So it's actually gonna be like a local host port 3000 slash blog engine slash posts. So if we take this and we paste it up here and we, oops, and we try to go to this URL, we'll get a different error here. This one's telling us we don't have these tables. Why is that? Well, we generated the migrations for our uh, for our engine, but we don't have them installed here. For this, what we can do is we can type rake, let the up arrow key, the name of our engine, which is blog engine, colon install, colon migrations. And this is just built in for any engine that you have. You can just run this command. That's why you've probably seen this before. This will go ahead and copy those migrations for you. We go ahead and let's run a Rails S again. We'll refresh this page. Now you can see pending migration errors. Now we have to run those migrations with a Rails DB colon migrate command. And now we run into a different error. This one's telling us that the uh, assets aren't declared. Now there's a couple different ways to get around this. One is you can link these assets in your actual Rails app. You come into app, assets, 
uh, it's going to be in config and manifest. You can paste this in, stop your server and start it. And you might have had to do this before. And this is sort of where this error comes from. You have to link to that engine itself and that uh, application.css file. Now, this is more work for the person using your app. It's also a little bit cringe. So there's probably a better way to do it. Let's come back over to our blog engine. So let's close this, come over here. In our blog engine, there's a th neat little trick we can do. We can come into our config, right click, new folder, initializer, uh, or is it initializers? I think it's plural. Inside of initializers, we can do an assets.rb file. And now inside of this assets.rb file, we can do a rails.application. Uh, oops, rails.application.config.assets.precompile plus equals percent W right there, what GitHub Copilot is telling us. And in here, we can grab the blog engine slash application.css and optionally the application.js as well. Save that. You can also just grab everything that's inside of your, your blog engine route because up here in your app assets, style sheets, you have that blog engine directory. And it's gonna be similar if you uh, have any JavaScript you wanna use. But okay, we have this. Uh, now, how do we actually use this? Well, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come over to our lib directory and our blog engine directory, which is the name of our engine. And then inside of this version, we're gonna to want to increment this version by one. Now let's come over here and let's do a git add dot, git commit dash M, and we'll say uh, fix asset pre, oops, pre compilation error. And then we'll just do that. We'll do a git push, type yes, hit enter, and now hit control L. So that's pushed up. Now let's come over to our actual blog. This is our actual Rails app. And now let's do a bundle update. It'll ask us again if we want to trust this. We'll say yes. Uh, and then we can come here. And now we'll see using blog engine 0.1.1 was 0.1.0 from blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. So that's now been updated. We can come over here at run a Rails S. Let's again make sure our manifest doesn't have that line anymore. But now if we refresh, you'll see it's still working as expected. You can click new post, give it a test, give it a case and that works just fine. The final thing we might wanna do here is come into our config and our routes inside of our actual Rails app, and we might wanna do something like set the root of the application to be uh, the index for the, uh, let me hit enter, uh, blog engine posts. So we can say root is blog engine slash posts controller index action, which is what we did the other day with threaded, right? We set it to root was like threaded slash message boards controller and index, I think is what it was. So it's a similar situation. This time it's our own engine. So it's the blog engine. We save that, go ahead and restart our server. And now let's come over to localhost port 3000. And we're inside of that engine itself as the root of our application. Of course, we can still do a Rails G controller pages home, right? Create our own homepage run a Rails S and we can still come over to slash pages slash home uh, and that takes us outside of that engine. Of course, if we come back here though, we're back inside of that engine itself. But yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about here. Just a quick little intro into how to use these. Uh, of course, the edge guides always take you a lot further, uh, but it always helps to have someone sort of walk you through some of these errors, at least until you get to something that's visible on the screen. And then from there, you can incrementally break it to make progress. So yeah, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I do have a video coming that'll cover how to use like a private GitHub repository because I know that was a question on the previous video. It just takes me time. I'm recording this like two in the morning. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is helpful and hopefully uh, you are willing to wait for the, the private GitHub video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.